everybody, it's Erin. I'm going to be going through a couple different things here today. I'm going to be showing you a couple of my different decks. I know I've been going through kind of two decks at a time recently. I also wanted to let you know I'm going to be making some amethyst earrings. They're going to be good sized amethyst pieces that are basically going to be teardrop earrings that are about this long. So they're going to be very soon attached. For those of you who don't know, I do make jewelry. I actually was really proud of my rose quartz earrings that I made not that long ago. They were just big dangle rose quartz pieces. Um, and those were one of my more popular items that I made last year. I do work with primarily Amazonite Dalmatian Jasper, which is an excellent, excellent grounding stone. And then I have petrified wood pieces here, the opalite. And I do customized earrings too so I have these beaded drops here and then I'll put like any charm by request sort of at the bottom if you're looking for a special very customized gift for anybody I can accommodate you as well really like the way the Amazonite here sort of has like these different blue teal tones in it but I think that the amethyst is going to be really attractive when it's done too everybody loves amethyst um, so yeah, those are going to be, I'm going to make probably, let's see, I could make about six pairs. So these are the pieces themselves, just for an idea for size. And I think that they would be interesting on like a single drop pendant too, but what I think I'm going to do is do earrings, unless anyone else has a request for another type of jewelry. I think earrings are by far my favorite thing to make. Um, and I really enjoy bringing natural elements in, especially for crystal healing. I do use primarily hypoallergenic things. Just ignore the items on the horizon. I was teaching a class earlier today, and I'm also setting up some furniture here so had a couple things going on in the shop today um this one i haven't featured for a little while this is my wild unknown tarot deck i haven't really shown that since my days when i was at the mill several months ago um and my other one i wanted to show off today If anyone ever has a question about what I have available, I actually use, I use wooden box for storage, but I do always keep the box um, that they come with, just because frequently when they don't have a physical book of how to read them, um, there usually is a barcode on the back. That's what is go very, very common these days. Everybody's got a barcode for everything. Spirit Song Tarot. Um, this is Tarot of the Cloisters, which is Tarot, Fountain Tarot. I have Mystic Mondays. Everybody really likes Mystic Mondays right now. Um, I do not currently sell decks, but I am exploring how to do that in the future for classes. I've been teaching Tara 101 and Tara 102 for several months now, and now I'm trying to explore kind of what people are receptive to. This is about the fourth time I've taught the class 101, and only recently did I start breaking it up into Tara 101 and Tara 102 because I think that there's so much information to go over that I think that I'm not interested in overwhelming anybody, and I want everybody to enjoy themselves. So Tarot 101, I basically had 
Um, everybody got informational folders and some information to go over and basically encouraged them to practice with their decks and kind of come back to me the following week and say what their thoughts are if they have a particular couple of cards that way that they um, have bonded to or with. I know for me I have a fair few who are frequent flyers. I think anytime you read your own cards after a while you sort of discover these patterns and I encourage people to journal when they're doing tarot. I think it can be enormously helpful because if you're trying to make heads or tails of what something means, um, and it could be something that doesn't make sense to you right now, but it does make sense to you a week later when you're like, oh yeah, I did make a decision on Monday that affected me on Thursday. Hi, Brie. So I'm just going to go through. This one is called the Spirit Song Tarot. And it works on sort of this fascinating metric. It's not, like, yes, it is a, a typical 78 card deck, but they work on um, they have acorns. They have like their core um, metric is the same in terms of the major, major arcana. They have the hermit card. This is their wheel card. Wheel of fortune. And then we have, they work on feathers, crystals, shells, and, excuse me, I'm blanking just for a second. Thank you, John. Yeah, I really like these. They are among my absolute favorite. If I could just find their fourth. Feathers, crystals, shells, and, oh, okay, here's one. Here's acorns, and each card has just this absolutely stunning, piece here. I can just do a mini scan. There's all kinds of things. I tend to encourage, like I said, people should get the deck that speaks to them. And obviously that takes some time. Maybe you don't bond with the first deck you never, ha you ever have. And then it takes you years and years to kind of come with things. And that's what I think my journey was specifically. Like, I didn't necessarily bond with the first deck that was given to me, and then it took me a while to, to kind of come back and be like, oh, okay, I remember this. I think it's kind of funny that their justice card is a raven, and for those of you who don't know me very well, ravens are my one thing that I get spooked by. Sort of a fun fact about Erin. So yeah, they are... Um, this handbook is a barcode as well, but they do have a linear translation that the um, acorns translates to wands and so forth. Crystals translates to swords, on and on and on. So I really, yeah, I think that this is just so stunning. Like each individual card has such... A fascinating story and this is you really utilitarian to me like if you're doing a past life reading this helps translate things that don't necessarily correlate to directly to like objects like this is not stuff that always has to be um, tangible that's the word I was looking for tangible like this is very much a a deck that will help you divine and help you get across a story that doesn't necessarily make sense to people's current situations or if they're looking for something beyond like to figure out who their spirit animal is or who their spirits are that are visiting them like this is something that will absolutely help you on that journey So my thing is, if any of you haven't um, sat for a reading with me, I always start by saying, okay, what's on your mind today? What do you feel like is something that you need clarification on? People don't always know. Like, if you're coming in for a general reading, that's 100% okay. Um, I encourage that as well. 
I just think that sometimes we have multiple different things going on and sometimes if you're short on time or you're looking for you know maybe you have a job interview tomorrow and you're looking for something very specific um, and I want to make the most of your time to make sure I'm giving you the best information that makes the most sense for what's in your immediate future as opposed to doing like you know during a 90 minute reading I'd be able to give you much more significantly detailed information um, I do frequently pull whatever deck feels correct for that person like there are certain decks that I'll pull out specifically for love readings there are certain decks that I'll pull out specifically for um, people who are doing like a past life reading or somebody who's looking into something very detailed in the future I really tailor it each reading to that person and I don't always go by like I'll sometimes use more than one deck like I'll pull oracle cards as clarifier sometimes um, and I always go by the rule of thumb if if like something isn't making complete sense you can pull from whatever deck feels like it's trying to speak to you at that time or if you have multiple cards trying to jump out at the same time when you're only trying to pull one then that's also I always take like for example if I'm shuffling and like two cards fall out but I'm only trying to pull one then I'll always treat that as like that's I'll make it like that's my Celtic cross base this is a playing card set that was my Nana's I find it really utilitarian for clarifiers. And for those of you who aren't aware, yes, you can read with bicycle cards. Um, they are, well, not just specifically bicycle, but any playing card you can read with. They are cards that are 52, obviously a lot of people know 52 cards, but 78 in a tarot deck versus the 52 kind of original um, court cards that everything else started from. Tarot itself started as a game, like a sort of like the seriousness of like a poker game, something high stakes. And over time, people kept adding cards and creating their own cards. There was no governing body to, to stop them from creating different characters. And now, over time it's just evolved so far beyond anything superficial like that so my wild unknown deck like i said i i use this one almost as frequently as i use my rider weight deck um the imagery is not for everybody. It can be sort of startling, so I'll kind of tailor. Like if I have a client who's older or somebody who's not really receptive to um, imagery of a particular nature, like the devil card in here, the tower card in here are actually a little bit more off-putting to people who aren't really prepared for the imagery. So you can see there's sort of this beautiful thick wooded area here um i will say that they are there are a couple of cards in particular in here that are more like almost extra off-putting because like the five of swords in here is a warm uh worm that's cut in half and the like it's easier to tell the good omens from the bad omens but it's also Now I'm not going to be able to find any of the cards. Like there are, you can tell, like I said, the good omens from the darker omens here. Um, when I get to the point where I've seen somebody a few times, I will make note of what their lucky numbers are because they'll have a different meaning to each individual person and if 
maybe four is somebody's lucky number, maybe 10 is somebody's number, and it could mean something totally different to them than it does to you as the reader, as the general rule of thumb. Um, dates in tarot can come through in sort of a very linear way. So if you're, maybe you get these cards and you're going to go, okay, 10, five of pentacles and five of cups. So you could do 10, five, five. It could be somebody was born in 55. There really are so many places to go here. So if you're looking for dates of something specific, there are also rules of multiples. So if you get two fives or three threes, there are all these different meanings. I know there's just too much to go over in uh, a short little live video, but I would happy to go through that someday by request if um, anybody's interested in either private tutoring or to sit in on my next Tarot 101 or Tarot 102 class. The classes themselves are new enough that I'm willing to take, you know, any advice that someone is interested in. It's hard to meet everybody as, at where they are at a starting point. Like somebody might never have had a tarot deck ever and somebody might be looking for a refresher on a tarot deck that they already have or they might be looking to learn a different tarot deck and I start usually going over with Rider Waite. So if that's what they're already familiar with, then it's harder to make sure like everybody gets direct information that they that makes sense to them only because it can be so in depth so at this time i do have some availability this tuesday and this wednesday coming up next week early next week um, I am, let's see, Tuesday and Wednesday, and I could also do like Friday evenings for appointments if somebody was interested in that. And then as of next weekend, I'll be doing more walk-in readings as well. Um, at this time, I'm still doing my standard rate of uh, 30 for a half hour, 60 for an hour. And then if somebody's looking for a 90 minute reading, I usually just go by the half hour increment. I'll do 90 for 90 minutes as well. Which is fairly reasonable compared to some of the other rates around. Um, I really try to keep my price points fair for so that everybody can get the information that they are in need of. Um, Tarot 101 and Tarot 102 are each $25. And they do sort of pack a punch. I have informational folders that everybody leaves with. They're theirs to keep. Um... What other information is critical to um, in the near future I'm going to be getting my Reiki 3 and 4 that's going to be happening in June of this year so about two months from now um, I'm also going to be taking my yoga teacher training in Miramar Florida that's happening in be leaving on May 6th This is sort of what I was touching on earlier. The Nine of Swords. For those of you who don't know, the rule of thumb for eight, nine, and ten of swords is that eight means you're not on a good path. It's sort of like a, a red, yellow, and orange, red, and yellow light. It's eight is you're not on the right path. Nine is please turn around before it's too late. And ten is usually something that's like completely irreparable to like it's not 
for you. Like there is no second chance beyond that. And you probably ignored chances that you had to get there. Obviously a lot of these are things that will translate more, they'll make more sense when you know the individual. Like, I think that some of the more challenging aspects come from um, if you're seeing people who, like maybe somebody comes in because they're seeing multiple people and trying to figure out who to see more of, who to see less of, and then that relies on maybe your knowledge of the astrological aspects, like, um, Daughter of Swords is usually feminine, unchecked feminine energy. Father of Swords can be somebody who rules with an iron hand, sort of an immovable object. Um, but then once we get into cups, it's like, okay, you have a, a water sign coming to you because of the cups, or you have an air sign coming to you because of the swords, and some of that is stuff that is not going to make sense for a long time um, until you get a lot of practice in. So... But if anybody has any questions about appointment availability or is um, at all interested in me letting them know when my next class series is, I can certainly let you know that as well.